Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the RotoPros.com Best DFS Show that just happens to come at you around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Red Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. This is another EPL breakdown for Match Week 36, Saturday, April 27th, 2019. Let's jump right into this five game slate. First game of the slate, we have Everton making the trip from Liverpool into London to play Crystal Palace. Next game of the slate, we have Cardiff making the trip from Wales into the heart of London to play Fulham. We have both Bournemouth and Southampton in a Southern Derby for the third game of the slate. In the fourth game, we have Wolves making the trip into London to play Watford in the next game on the slate. We have final game of the slate, I should say, Newcastle making the trip all the way up north, all the way down south to play Brighton. So yeah, let's jump right into the first game of the slate. Everton making the trip to Crystal Palace. Everton are actually coming into this in a half-decent form. They haven't lost in four of their previous five and six of their previous eight games, winning five of those eight games. They've actually all alternated a win loss in seven straight away games and they're due for a win this slate this is interesting too because palace have actually alternated a win and loss in nine straight games but they're due for a loss this slate. So if that's something, a little narrative you're interested in, that's kind of fun. Uh, but Everton are a much worse away side than they are a home side. They've won only five of their 17 away games this season, losing nine of their 17 as well. Obviously, nine of their 14 losses this season have come away from home, losing to Fulham, Newcastle, Southampton, Brighton, teams you shouldn't drop points to. Uh, only one team has scored in five straight, nine out of their previous 10, and 12 out of the previous 15 Everton games. And they actually haven't lost to Palace in seven straight away games. So Palace is technically the second worst home team in the league. A lot of that has to do with the fact for the majority of the season, Palace wasn't scoring at home. And in many cases, they weren't allowing teams to score as well. And a lot of that came down to just having them score less or other teams score less than Palace was scoring. So it wasn't really about Palace blowing out games. All season, really low scoring, hard to win games. Uh, so yeah, that may not necessarily be the case anymore, but it's something to remember. Uh, they've scored only more than once in two of their previous 10 home games. They've won only one of their previous five and three of their previous 10 home games. All season, they've won only four of their 17 home games, losing nine of those 17 games. They failed to beat Cardiff, West Ham, Watford, Southampton, Newcastle. Again, teams that you can't lose points to. And what kind of has been bucking the trend as of late is that a team is scored at least twice in four straight Palace home games. So it's kind of lending already its hand to a 2 nothing Everton win. So let's quickly take a look at this and a lot of this comes down to me, uh, Pickford or Guiada. Pickford has immensely better defensive options and better shot at clean sheet. So they're practically the same price. I think a lot of people may fall on the home side. I'm hoping Everton will get the win this slate, though, uh, coming from a clean sheet, obviously. And I think Dingy makes sense in cash. And if you're rolling with that, you can roll with Pickford as well since this is likely going to be a low scoring game uh, and then GPP uh, you can also roll with uh, uh, with Coleman as well now I want to talk very briefly on an Everton defensive stack basically this slate there's going to be fewer higher salaries on names that don't necessitate them simply because there aren't the Man City Liverpool Spurs big name teams so what that means is that a lot of ownership may unnecessarily fall on certain names that have huge salaries and that takes away the salary ability for other more viable options for either format, whether it be cash or GPP. And I think Everton are a prime example of that, where we get the option to have three really fairly expensive to the most expensive defensive options in the slate, uh, where a lot of other people won't be able to afford that when they tag on another 8 uh, to 9k salary uh, that may not even be related to or outside this game. So yeah. Uh, that's just something to remember. I do like the defense for everything in GPP. You can roll with uh, Digne and Pickford in cash or just Digne. It all works out. Uh, now, in terms of the midfield, this is where I'm kind of excited this slate. It's interesting to see what's going to happen here because Richarlison and Walcott are, are both very likely to miss out. What that means is that 90 minutes is going to probably fall onto guys like Bernard uh, and Calvert-Lewin. And in particular, I really like Calvert-Lewin this slate. But I think using either or in cash this slate is excusable. It isn't my favorite options. But if you're looking at someone especially like like Bernard at 3.8k for 90 minutes against Crystal Palace. I don't really hate that 
all you need is six to eight fantasy points and you'll be doing fine if everything else does what everything else is supposed to do and if you happen to catch a goal off him in gpp you're instantly takedown mode if everyone else starts doing what they're supposed to do that just sets you up properly so i really like bernard this slate if he gets the start which he should for 90 minutes against crystal palace and i especially like calvert lewin this slate for either format 7.1k i think he's going to be tremendously under owned in gpp GPP and is as near locked to a GPP play this slate for me as long as he gets the start obviously it's still up in the air it is soccer you can never be 100% sure but in terms of Sigurdsson I don't see any reason not to use him in cash this slate makes a lot more sense than some of the other names that are up in the salary scale so yeah uh not my favorite salary, obviously, but 9.5K played in the right situation isn't the worst idea. Uh, now, in terms of Crystal Palace, I don't mind Guieta for GPP, but the issue is that he doesn't really have any uh, defensive options. Uh, so I, whenever I'm weighing uh, like the the Palace defensive or the super value in Everton, I'm probably going to take the Everton seven to eight times out of 10. So yeah, I'm not that interested in the defense uh, for Palace and then into the midfield. You can look at someone like Zaha, but again, these are kind of plays where you get into 8.5 K and I'll touch on guys like this as we go through the slate where you really need the rest of the slate to crap out. If you hope for anyone to really do uh, well from their salary. So 8.5 K is a massive ask for either format especially cash is almost no gpp i'm really not that interested if you're saying if you're looking at this you're saying i want a palace script i think palace is viable milicevic is really the only viable option but you can use him in either format he's going to take lots of crosses and he has serious goal outs from a GPP standpoint from 7.7K. Obviously, you don't want to take him and Pickford at the same time. I would rather just take Pickford, period. But like I said, if you're on Palace, Milicevic is the place to go. And finally, up front, uh, you can look at guys like... Uh, Sorry, if uh, something interesting happens to get thrown in, like uh, I want to say Max Meyer or something like that, you could think of that for GPP. But up front, uh, they're worth fades, nothing more. They're not going to get 90 minutes. And that's really the big concern here. They'll always be subbing off for each other at really inopportune times. So uh, you can't really play too many Palace forwards because they're not, they're just uh, leads uh, to your PMR. Uh, so yeah, in terms of everything, it's just far more appealing. Uh, I think a 0-0 game is in order as well. I'm not saying that Everton is going to do great because this could be false value. So I really prefer the Everton defense. But if you're going to look at some value this slate, there's other guys in there in Everton that could very easily get you 2 nothing Everton. That's why I'm saying Everton 2, Palace nil. Next game on the slate, we have Cardiff making the trip from Wales into Fulham. Um, really strange game here. Uh, technically third worst versus second worst. Cardiff is the third worst team in the league. They've lost 22 of their 35 games this season. They've lost four of their previous five, seven of their previous ten. And this includes 13 straight games without a draw and eight straight games without a draw. So this is a little bit important. Remember that Cardiff aren't drawing games a lot of that lens because they're really bad they're much worse away from home they've won only three of their nine uh, win, or excuse me three uh, only three of their nine wins this season have come away from home they've won only two of their previous five away three of their previous 10 away losing six of those 10 and one team has been shut out in four straight Cardiff away games and all those games happen to finish two nothing now for Fulham Fulham is the second worst team in the league they've lost 24 of their 35 games this season that includes 15 15 straight games and eight straight away games without a draw. So neither of these two teams are drawing. A lot of that lends again to the fact they're both horridly bad, but at the same time, uh, you have to win games eventually, and Fulham has started doing that again. They have come into this game on the back to back win train without conceding a goal. Before that, though, they are uh, they were, I should say, nine straight losses outside the back-to-back -back wins. They've lost four of the previous five and six of the previous ten at home. And only five of their six wins this season have come at home. I shouldn't say only. Five of their six wins have come at home this season. So that's a check there. Most of their wins, obviously, one win away, not very good this season. 
At least two goals have been scored in seven straight home games uh, with at least one team scoring twice for Fulham. So what that means here is that we have started seeing a lot of goals to contrast that Crystal Palace games, which have been notoriously defensive. Fulham games have really stepped up in terms of the offense. So yeah, a lot of that... I'll, I'll touch shortly on Fulham here, but I don't think there's going to be a clean sheet this game, so I'm not really interested very much in Etheridge. A lot of that has to do with the fact that he has basically no defensive options for either format that make any kind of sense. The only real guy on Cardiff that makes any kind of sense for DFS is Junior Hoylett. The reason isn't because he's Canadian, which he happens to be. The real reason is because he he's the only guy that provides any kind of a cushion where if he does anything, you're in a situation to actually succeed. He, he's the only success, success script that makes sense in all of Cardiff. Now, if you look at his scores uh, with a goal he'll jump up to 18 to 20 fantasy points, which from 6K is viable to probably help you start to take down this slate. So I really don't mind Hoylet for either format, if I'm being honest, but I'd probably just keep him to GPP. Uh, but 6K isn't a big asking price this slate, and it kind of keeps you in the range where you're able to play either Sigurdsson or another big-name salary in cash and still fill in really decent names. Uh, so yeah, don't forget about Junior but outside of Cardiff, there, there, it's soccer, right? It's DFS. Anything can happen. So someone here could roll off a couple. But like in terms of the viable make sense, uh, make sense options, Junior Hoyle is really the only guy from Cardiff. So let's jump over to Fulham. Again, two straight games without scoring is really absurd for Fulham. I missed this boat. It's old news at this point. So basically, if you haven't bet on a full and clean sheet in back-to-back -back games it's probably too late at this point because so many people are going to be jumping on board now it's just not going to be as as valuable anymore so i'm not as interested and i that doesn't necessarily lend itself i just hope hoylet gets the goal if hoylet gets the goal and you have him in ownership at under five percent you're doing really really well for gpp this slate uh and on top of that it will check it will really ruin a lot of people who are chasing the full and clean sheet as well. So yeah, uh, I really am not looking for the, that I should say the clean sheet. Joe Bryan is someone in cash you can use from 5.3 K. He, a lot of Fulham, him and a lot of Fulham are players that you can just use. They aren't someone to build around. They aren't someone that you want to make sure you get in. But if you land on their salary and you're like, I'm not sure what I should do you can feel comfortable using these guys really in either format. So I don't mind Joe Bryan, 5.3 K. Um, Ryan Sessegna, 5.9 K, another name. Uh, again, either format, you can get away with them. I'd probably keep them to GPP, but if you follow 5.9 K, again, it allows you to use someone like Sigurdsson and still fill in a lot of really decent names and cash, and he isn't really in a bad spot. Uh, now, and then as we get to the forward, though, really someone that you're going to want to use this slate in either format, most likely cash in my opinion, uh, but you can use them in GPP as well. Those ownership probably will be a little bit high is Mitrovic from 8.1 K. Now, Ryan Babel is viable as well, but he is a little bit more expensive and his minutes are consistently not 90. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll extend an olive branch that he's probably seeing enough minutes to do just enough to be cash viable. I'm just not looking to con consistently take on guys I know are going to lose minutes. So GPP, Ryan Babel, sure. Mitrovic, maybe cash and GPP. Uh, stacking the two of them in GPP, I don't even hate, uh, especially if Fulham happen to pull off three goals and both of them get involved. Uh, you could really be looking at a seriously low-owned uh, kind of stack. Throw in Sessegnon as well on uh, GPP. I don't mind chasing some Fulham. Uh, the thing is, uh, I just want to stress, a lot of Fulham is going to be old news this slate. A lot of people are going to know what to do with Fulham, namely Mitrovic and that clean sheet. Uh, so I would look to go outside that with probably uh, maybe uh, Babel and Sessegnon stack in GPP or maybe Metrovic. I don't hate Metrovic, obviously. I'm, I'm going to use him in cash this slate. Let's say that. So, yeah, uh, final score here. I would like to see something cool like a 3-1 Fulham win. It'll probably be a 2-1 Fulham win, and that's what I'll stick with. Fulham 2, Cardiff 1.
Next game on the slate, we have Bournemouth making the really quick trip into Southampton here. Uh, so yeah, Bournemouth coming into this in pretty for, poor form. They've lost three of their previous five. They've won only one of their previous five and two of their previous ten. And while they have won two of their previous three away games, they have lost ten of their previous twelve away as well. Uh, twelve of their away, twelve of their seventeen away games this season have ended in defeat. They actually, interesting stat, they haven't drawn away from home yet. So again, when you're looking for a result, you can always look to a Bournemouth away game because there simply won't be a draw for the keeper to lose out on the win. So either or, just something to remember. Uh, now, interesting enough, Bournemouth have won only one of their previous 11 games versus Southampton. So uh, yeah, Southampton is in borderline desperation mode they win one more game and they are safe from relegation so i think they see a lot of value in going for it at this point uh and really striving for that victory because they don't it doesn't serve them to sit back and let the rest of the league play out and hope that they don't uh end up getting relegated uh they are winless in back-to-back -back games and in three of their previous five however they are a much much better team at home winning three of their previous five home games and uh only uh they've lost only six of their 16 home games this season and an interesting stat here is that southampton has never lost an epl home game to bournemouth so much like earlier uh bournemouth is struggling uh against southampton in particular a way they've never found success before in the english premier league so yeah uh very quickly let's take a quick look at a quick 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 look at bournemouth uh borg i'm not really interested in despite the lack of viable options on southampton the only thing you can really hope for is that southampton don't score twice and if that happens um really there just isn't I, I see that more as being a nobody succeeds script rather than uh, a Boruk finding value from 4.3 K uh, a lot of that has to do with the fact from his absolute void of defensive options there's literally nothing there whether it's Begovic or Boruk it really doesn't matter there's no defensive stacking options so there isn't really a lot of sense maybe if you want to be silly in GPP but there uh, again I don't see a lot of point in that now in terms of uh, the first guy I want to talk about with a salary that's just too high and it's Ryan Frazier. Now, I will extend a couple of olive, branch, uh, olive branches again uh, to the fact that him and Callum Wilson have very simply just been much better away from home than they have been at home. Uh, so, if you are looking to stack the pair, that's obviously why they are so expensive. Uh, they do well away from home, but that just isn't something I'm necessarily looking at. And with Stanislas out, excuse me, uh, it's unfortunate. Again, a really serious injury. Uh, Brooks is probably going to be seeing 90 minutes. Uh, 6.5K is just a little bit too much for me this slate. I'd rather look uh, other places for that salary, particularly up front. I'd rather take the chance in Callum Wilson. Now, Josh King is starting to see a reduced minutes, which is concerning. Uh, so I'm not necessarily looking to jump on him. And he hasn't been playing very well either. So I think that 5.4K is a little bit of a trap. So maybe Frazier and Wilson in GPP, but that's as far as I would take my Bournemouth exposure this slate. And to look in the flip, uh, you can take Angus Gunn in cash, 5.3K. I really don't hate it. A lot of that has to do with the fact that Matthew Target's going to be playing this slate, and he's probably one of my favorite defensive options for either format in 5.9K. I think the clean sheet chase is really viable on Southampton, so you can use Angus Gunn. On top of that, Matthew Target's one of the best open player crossers in the entire league and Bournemouth just allow everything all sorts of nonsense chance creation so yeah Matthew Target get him into your cash cards uh, even GPP this slate don't shy in trying to go over the field now in terms of the midfield I don't hate Ward Pros for GPP he definitely isn't the ideal cash option he does a lot of things but a, a big issue is that he doesn't really convert a lot of things into DFS scoring so 
almost AK is a really hefty price tag for someone that really doesn't convert very well for cash. GPP, sure, uh, go with some Ward Pros. Preferably, I would uh, go with Nathan Redmond in cash if I was to go with anyone. I am a little bit concerned about his floor, but at the same time, he should be seeing 90 minutes against a team like Bournemouth who just allow everything to happen. So uh, I expect a really good game from Nathan Redmond this late. Maybe GPP, but if you follow them in cash, 6.3K definitely isn't that big of a risk. And then up front, it's good. We're starting to see some minutes uh, falling away, but at the same time, uh, they're much like... Uh, uh, the uh, the attackers on Crystal Palace. You're not going to get 90 minutes. There's no real reason to try and chase the Southampton forward. So again, I would rather just chase the Southampton defensive stack this game and uh, try and get uh, this at uh, maybe some uh, low owned midfield goals from uh, someone on Southampton like. Um, I hope Josh Sims seems to see some more minutes. Southampton's really good for giving you a random starter for GPP that's going to do really well. So just remember that when you see the Southampton lineup, it's always kind of a mystery. But uh, yeah, I, I do like Nathan Redmond this late uh, GPP. I think he should be the prime beneficiary from this game. I will say... Southampton won... Bournemouth 0 final score. Second last game of the slate, we have Wolves making the trip into London to play Watford. So Wolves is coming into this undefeated in back-to-back -back games, and they haven't lost in three of the past five as well. However, they have lost and won only three of their previous ten games. They're drawing a lot of games. They're winless in five straightaway games, and that includes teams of Southampton, Burnley, Huddersfield, and Bournemouth, teams you really can't draw points to. Uh, they haven't scored more than once in, uh, oh, excuse me, more than once in uh, five straight games, and they are a much worse away team than they are at home. They've conceded five goals in uh, their previous two games against Burnley and Southampton, and seven of their twelve losses this season have come away from home. Now, in terms of Watford, Watford's borderline incredible at home. They're undefeated in four of the previous five, seven of their previous ten, losing only of uh, three of those previous ten. They've kept the opposition under goal in seven straight home games but however both teams have scored and at the same time there's been more than two total goals in seven of their previous 10 games so what that does necessitate is that they're probably going to allow a goal but they're probably going to score more than once uh so yeah let's quickly take a look at wolves um it's tough I would rather spend up on Pickford and Guayetta. I think that game has a much higher chance of producing a lower scoring outing. Uh, is it the worst idea? No, 4.6K isn't too bad, but I just think there's better options. Um, a lot of that, again, has to do with the lack of viable defensive options. I see Doherty's price is starting to go back up, and I don't necessarily support it. But in any case... Uh, I I'll be fading uh I'll I'll be fading him for Johnny if I'll be taking anyone. I don't see why uh you can if you're gonna risk anything on Wolves, I'll definitely take Johnny at four point two k. Uh, now, going into the midfield, Jota is being priced up because of recent performances there. I'm going to say it. That doesn't mean he can't continue to perform, uh, but I'm just not necessarily as interested. And Moutinho, again, just isn't as viable as I would like, away from home especially. So, yeah, um... Yeah, it's, it's tough. Watford allow a lot of crosses, but a lot of those crosses come from the wingback areas like Johnny. So that's really where I'll be looking instead of someone like Moutinho there. I'll, I'll say that. And then up front, uh, Jimenez is at 7.6K is too cheap. I would probably keep him to GPP. Uh, he definitely isn't a cash play. Uh, like Mitrovic is a cash play. Uh, Jimenez is a GPP play just because the salary and ownership are going to be so low and he does stand the capability to score uh, more than once so yeah I don't dislike that but I'm not as interested in Wolves as I am in Watford that's for sure they're just really good at home and they've been playing really well all season at home so Ben Foster 4.9k I'd rather spend down on Pickford but he is viable a lot of that has to do with the fact that Holobos should be coming back this slate and I really do like him from 5.4k um 
I won't pretend that there is a lot of risk involved, but he should see enough crosses on this type of slate to push for double digits where a lot of other, a lot of other people will be struggling for those kind of raw points. Now, as we look at the midfield, um, Will Hughes at 4.7 K is interesting to me. Uh, his minutes are always a concern, so it isn't as viable as some other options, but his salary just is too low. Prayer at 3.9K stands out like a sore thumb. Um, I'm not sure really what to say. He should see 90 minutes. He's just way too cheap, and he's priced down because he hasn't played in so long. So, yeah, definitely look at some prayer of this slate, 3.9K. He's borderline in this range where it's like you can use this in cash just because his salary is so stupid low. In fact, using prayer and Bernard on uh, or Bernard on Everton, uh, those two super, super low salaries, I think is really smart play of this slate. Uh, because especially in GPP, that allows you to get Delafeu and Everton. Now, I do like Delafeu this slate an awful lot. I would like to be able to afford him and Sigurdsson in the same cash lineup. I don't necessarily see it as viable. Uh, the big issue for me is that um, ceiling. I do see Everton finding two goals, but Sigurdsson needs to be in on both of them. And Watford are a complete toss-up. Like This could just as easily finish 1-1. Uh, so I'm not as interested in Delafeo as I am Sigurdsson. I think Delafeo is looking at eight crosses probably as a floor of the slate. So I do like his floor a little bit more, but I think he's completely lacking a ceiling. And uh, Sigurdsson does have access to a stronger upside. So yeah, weigh that one out. Uh, it's a little bit tough for me uh, with... Uh, no Troy Deeney, Andre Gray, 7.3K again. I'd rather just go with the Everton side of things, uh, a little bit cheaper, and I'm hoping a little bit less ownership for a little bit more upside. Uh, now I get that Watford is better at home, so Andre Gray and Lookman together as a GPP stack is also something I really, really like. Um but yeah, in terms of uh, cash, it's got to be Delafeo or Sigurdsson. I really can't find a way to get them both in this slate, unfortunately. So I'll say a final score, 1-1 Watford makes a lot of sense. I'm hoping for a 2-1 Watford win, but I think I'll stick with my 1-1. 1-1 one, one. Uh, one, one final score. Final game of the slate. We're finally here. Newcastle making the trip all the way down south to Brighton. So, yeah, uh, Newcastle have won back-to-back -back games, losing only three of their previous ten games. However, they are much worse away from home. They've won only one of their previous nine, two of their previous ten, losing five of those ten away games. They've won only three of their 17 away games this season. And uh, only, obviously, of their 11 wins this season, three of them have uh, been away from home. So that's a very poor away statistic uh, for uh, a consistent run this entire season. Now, Brighton is a very interesting case. I know this is the last game. I want to touch on this very quickly. Brighton has basically fallen off the face of the earth. If you haven't been paying very much attention... Uh, they were doing fine. Everyone was comfortable. There were no issues. Like if you read write-ups from like five, six weeks ago, Brighton were, no one was talking about Brighton being relegated and they've completely just crap shooted it right to the relegation battle. They're winless in six straight games and they haven't scored a game over those six, is haven't scored a goal over those six games. Uh, they actually haven't scored a goal in the month of April as of yet. Uh, really, really bad run of games here. They've lo lost four of the previous five, seven of the previous ten, winning only two of those ten games. They've lost three straight at homes, four of the previous five, and six of their ten home games. They've won only one of their previous five and two of their previous ten at home. Six of their, six of their previous nine wins and seven of their 19, I should say, okay, six of their nine wins this season and seven of their 19 losses have all happened at home this season so basically Brighton has historically made their name from incredible home results that's what they've done this is how they've they've made their their stay in the English Premier League and while they've consistently done that throughout the entire season there have been a little bit more blips than usual and then lately it's just been a wow absolute fall off so the one interesting stat I'm thinking about this slate that's keeping me in my GPP mind is that 
Brighton has actually yet to concede an English Premier League goal to Newcastle. Now, they have only been in the league for a couple of seasons, but that still says a lot. It was 1-0 Brighton, 0-0 draw, 1-0 Brighton. Three games they've played. Um, I, GPP script. Let's just say that. Let's just say it's a GPP. So, yeah, quickly take a look at Debraca, 4.4K. They haven't conceded in... I don't know. I don't know. Excuse me. They haven't conceded. Brighton hasn't scored in six straight games. This is bound to snap eventually, but 4.4K. My concern is that Brighton don't take a lot of shots, and if they do happen to score, there's not going to be a lot of goals to really offset that. So maybe this is more of a DraftKings risk. Definitely avoid this in FanDuel, but Debraca is way too cheap from 4.4K. If he gets the win in a clean sheet, you're absolutely flying. Uh, all you need really is a save from there. Now, with Shar most likely out, I really don't mind Manquillo from 4.3K. I would even take him over Holobos. I think he makes a lot more sense, especially if you're taking Debraca. Uh, Late Hammer GPP, I think this is one of my favorite GPP stacks for uh, defense this slate, uh, simply because it's going to be completely low on and Brighton haven't scored in six straight games. Uh, so, looking into the midfield, Richie has been playing more of a defensive player and he hasn't really been seeing a solid 90 minute games now what's happened here is that Newcastle is starting to run into a little bit of injury so it wouldn't surprise me if Richie sees a 90 minute game for 8.k is more of a GPP play in my opinion he's just too expensive for cash uh, the raw points are a little bit reliant on him getting an assist, uh, but he still should do fine. Uh, my Here's my big concern with Brighton. So Brighton basically play everyone but their forward inside the 18-yard box when they're defending. They literally throw everyone back, and what they do is they allow a lot of shots and uh, tight little through balls and tend to like concede penalty shots, which would be taken by Matt Ritchie, mind you. Again, GPP, not really a cash play for me. Now, with Almiron out, uh, most likely Christian Atsu will be seeing 90 minutes, 4.2K. Again, another value play this slate that's just way too cheap. Him, Bernard, and uh, Pereira. Three guys that are just way too cheap that you can rely on as super value this slate for either format that carry a ton of risk, but I, I don't hate them. Um, now, in terms of, yeah, low salaries, like John Joe Sel Shelby's probably a little bit too cheap, but uh, I'm not sure if he'll be playing. It's a toss-up between him and Key. I'm not really interested in either. Uh, but, yeah, rolling into the forward range, uh, always we do have, oh, I was going to say Hayden's and his mints. Uh, Rondon. I'll talk about Rondon first. And the reason why I prefer Rondon over Perez, I think a lot of people will be chasing the inflated salary of Perez, uh, who has had uh, very good back-to-back -back games. I'm not necessarily saying he can't do it for three straight games, but for 8.7K, I'd rather spend down a little bit onto someone like Rondon at 7.5K and use that seven mid-7K mid, mid 7K range again for my GPP forwards. Uh, in terms of Perez, I more than likely would take him to a 10 times for GPP. Other than that, I would fade him just because of his salary inflation. I'm just not interested. Uh, now, jumping over to Brighton. Um... Yeah, Matt Ryan, 5.1K, probably too expensive. I'll say that. Uh, I know Newcastle are making the trip across the country, but and, and Brighton hasn't conceded to Newcastle yet in the English Premier League, but 5.1K is just too much to pay, in my opinion, for a team that hasn't scored or won a game or gotten a point in six straight games. And uh, his defense isn't really viable either. Um, Bong is really the only viable option floor option and he rarely gets playing time as you can see so uh, even then it's not even very good so I'm not necessarily interested in any kind of Brighton defensive aspect which only lends it further to Rondon why I like him so much and then looking at the midfield there are options here uh, the issue is that Knockert and Grobe take each other off they don't really play the same position and in particular uh, Grobe will handle the majority of the set pieces making Knockert completely unviable and you're just kind of hoping that Grobe stays on the field I would prefer Solly March of the three but again he's not he, they, all three of these guys don't play at the same time long story short and while I prefer March he's 
probably seeing the less likely of the three. And then as we look up front, like I said, Brighton haven't scored in six straight games. I don't really see any reason to try and chase these guys uh, in DFS, whether it's their minutes, they're not scoring. It doesn't really pan out no matter what. So um, Lucina, maybe there's 90 minutes. Uh, I would like to play Glenn Murray, but like the poor guy just doesn't see the field as much as he deserves. So, uh, yeah, um, I'll say final score here, Newcastle two, Brighton one, maybe nothing. I don't see Newcastle scoring less than one. I'll be surprised if Brighton score more than once. I'll be surprised they score at all. So yeah, that is the video. Thanks a lot for tuning in, everyone. Rotopros.com. Get over, check us out. Uh, join our Slack. Uh, make sure to sign up. Uh, join our community over there. Like, subscribe, comment. Hit me up on Twitter, Rad Rob Diamond, Sir Robert Six, and all the message boards and main sites. Good luck, everyone, this weekend. Hopefully, see you at the top of the message boards. Uh, and yeah, take care.